wanna chat with your girl, chat with your girl, chat with your girl, chat, 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 chat. Business and beauty, come and confess how you make your money and say yes to the gas. What's up, guys? I'm so excited. Today we have one of the most gorgeous friends of mine to ever uh, be in my life. And she's a friend. She's a mom entrepreneur, boss as bitch, stunning all the time. Please help me welcome Kristen Dominique. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. I'm so happy to be on here. Girl, we have known each other for so long. And I feel like this is just like another conversation because we always have conversations. We'll like catch up up in our crazy busy lives and then we'll like get back together and be like oh my god how are you how's the business what's up what's new and uh we were neighbors we collabed back in the day in 2014 i've been in your videos Mm -hmm. videos we've traveled the world together bitch (laughs) we've literally done we met each other at um well when we were traveling with the brand it was our first my first brand trip with tart remember Mm-hmm. It was just crazy. And I think I was like, kind of in and out of the Ipsy studios and you were filming there all the time. And then I remember a, a fond memory is like always talking like to you and then Caesar always giggling because I was always so stupid and <laughs> just just acting cut up. And then we would get food after or something. Caesar's a foodie too, your husband. And I'm um, watching Jaden, your son, grow up was so cool from a little, little, little boy to now being like taller than you. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be 14. It's so crazy. Chris Dami is an influencer superstar, um, million followers, 4 million subscribers. I've known you for years and you have a successful brand, Dominique Cosmetics. That How old is Dominique Cosmetics now? We are three years old. Oh my god. We're gosh. toddlers. It's We're still, out here still so stuff. crazy. <laughs> I remember when you started and it was like wow. What the yeah. Hell? And you're just jumping into it. Yeah, it was so crazy. Um, I think the full circle moment for me was my launch party. Like when I first launched our first palette was the latte palette. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother was there, mm-hmm. my mom was there, all my family. And that moment was so impactful in my life. And this is when I realized like, wow, I, I'm here. Because when I first moved to LA from Houston, I have literally, we moved in a U-Haul and we rode from Texas all the way to California, 24 hours. And we got a one bedroom apartment and we st- we were like, risking it all basically and then from there like the second year we got a two-bedroom apartment we're like okay we think we could do this we're still out here we're making it and then to go from that all the way to latte and having the brand and being in the condo being your neighbor like mm-hmm. that was so like wow we've we've really made it out here we're and really now you in a big ass house girl <laughs> <laughs> now we're in a house. yeah but it, it was a really cool moment yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, did When you started, um, you know, being a content creator and then seeing, like, the growth and, like, the L.A. and the production and um, did you ever think that you would end up where you are today with Dominique? I was, when I first started and I, when I first moved to L.A., I was scared. I think the first year I wanted to move back because it was almost, like, overwhelming because of the content, the quality and, like, I was around several really like influencers that were already big. And so it was a little intimidating at the time, but I think because I'm a very resilient person and I just keep going and we made it. And I'm just like, I don't give up, you know? So um, I think I acclimated to my environment really well. So I'm, I'm kind of really happy that I stuck it out and stayed out here. But what was the question? I kind of like no, went off on it. No, no, that 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 was it. I think like, like, did you ever think that you would end up here, like with Dominique Cosmetics? Not at first. I was like, let me go back home. But then I realized, you know, I came out here for this. Why would I go step back and just go back to my regular life as an insurance rep and doing things that really didn't make me happy? So, um, yeah, I stuck it out and I didn't think I would be here, but here we are and I'm loving every mm-hmm. minute of it. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because everyone that I've, I've spoke to like on the podcast, like when, when I look at them, I don't think anyone is prepared or anyone knows what the future lies ahead for them. The good, the bad, the ugly 
I, it's just crazy because that's what life is all about. It's that it's just the unexpected. But I think taking life by the horns and understanding your identity, and that's what I like love about each and every one of the guests. Like you, you're so unique in your identity, and it's so crazy because we're in the same fucking space, like as influencers. But I do not look one inch of Kristen Dominique <laughs> as much as I would love to look snatched and skinny, sickening mother. But it's just so funny because every time um, I meet someone new and I'm like, oh, or I come across your page and they find out you have a son, you probably get it all the time. They're like, yeah, she's a, oh my she's God, a I mom. Did. Yeah. That's a sister. That's so crazy. And I'm like, yes, she's a fucking mom. Like, can you believe it too? Like sickening. Like you guys look like siblings. It's so crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had him young, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, we kind of were growing up together and mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. Mm, that's cool do you do you have you, you said resilient before like looking back at the back at the young Chris and Dominique that moved here do you do you see any other other qualities that you had then that allowed you to to move forward in your success I think just my my driven is like a big thing for me I was always very ambitious and driven and I just don't stop you know, even if I do, like something doesn't, maybe something fails, um, I don't give up. Like, I'm like, okay, there's, there's a positive way out of this. Like I can utilize this to make this something. So this situation and make it something better. So I've always had that mindset. And I think that might have been part of why I'm here today. Cause I, I just don't stop. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, like going through the pictures like i was like oh my god me and kristen go way, way back <laughs> girl we look so young and i remember i remember collabing with you and i was just visiting and i was staying with ronnie on his couch at the time and i was like oh my god like i'm gonna do a video with kristen dominique and she's gonna let me do her makeup and it was just such a crazy thing and little did I know that we would both have brands we would both hey everything that you create I know this is about me right now but uh -huh. everything you create is gold like it's such good quality products I just want uh, to point thank you thank you you too like it's it's just amazing to see like your your fans and just the what what I think what I remember most I think it was like a gen beauty like one of them just like seeing your subscribers like wait in line for you and seeing the type of girls that um and boys and girls that would wait for you and like get to know you and I was like that's what her subscribers look like you know it's just it's just so cute because mine is like boys drag queens like older women like brenda looking people you know so it was just kind of funny but then i would see all these like like um like young shy soft-spoken girls that want to be aspire and it was just like so cool because you have this like kawaii quality like girl next door and i was like oh my god that is so cool that she resonates with these people and you have such a, a soft like spoken voice and um, I could see why Michelle wanted to work with you. Michelle being Michelle Fawn. Can you, can you tell everyone about your relationship with her and, and how did that start? So I actually was, I actually really looked up to Michelle Fawn. I still do. She's amazing. Her brand is amazing and everything. Um, but I remember being so inspired by her and I think her team reached out to me hmm. and I was meeting her for the first time once they already hired me and everything. And I, um, my first day on the job, we were in, in the office. Like we would have to edit and film in the office from nine to five at that time, <laughs> back in the old times. Um, and I remember seeing her for the first time and I swear I was going to faint. Like I felt my whole body, like I just was an outer body experience. I couldn't, feel, I was numb. And I was like, oh my God, I'm about to faint. Cause I couldn't believe I, I was seeing her for the first time, but she's so down to earth and so nice. It makes you feel so comfortable. So, um, but she's really cool. I mean, she's always been very supportive and I've, I'm, you know, I, Michelle's amazing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, for us that started, you, you started what, 2013, 2014? 2014. Yeah. I started my channel 2013, but started posting 2014. It's crazy just to see like who were our inspirations then and it was like 
like two, like Michelle Fodd and her massive business and other entrepreneurs at that time because no one really took us seriously. And now we have beauty brands, you know, and we're- And now it's us. Yeah, now it's us like years later. But it, it's crazy. C- can you talk about like, um, like what's your balance like with your life? Because I know you're very- you're a person with such compassion and empathy and you soak in emotions and I could just see it like in like even just talking to you about like, you know, certain topics and subjects about anything about life. And you just really are such a compassionate person. And how do you turn it on to when it comes to business and how do you turn it off when it comes to being a mom and not being the Kristen Dominique online like how do you know how to do that I think that compassion I feel like I don't turn it off I I carry that from my Mm. my home life into my business um but when it comes to I think for me what I would have to like turn on and off is being like um more like more like the like okay let's just put this for an example, Caesar's more of the um, strict parent and I'm more lenient. Mm-hmm. So I'm learning how to be more like, you know, you ha- you disciplinary and just like, you know, not being so like, okay, it'll be if I, he didn't mean it, you know, mm-hmm. or like in my business as well as, you know, learning how to be a little bit more, um, more like Caesar, <laughs> just mm-hmm. more business m- mindset where you take a little bit of that emotion out of it and it's more of a business mindset so um I think that is something that I've had to learn how to navigate in my family and business I see I see because um it's so funny because Caesar is like always behind the scenes and slowly his ass started coming on camera yeah and then and then I was like that's why she's so sickening and has his business because Caesar (laughs) is there to be the assertive like strict yeah partner a big part of it. Um, he is a, an amazing businessman. He, um, he comes from his first business. Well, he did, Dominique is his first business, but I think he came from AT&T being the manager of like so many different AT&Ts and he has a business degree now. And like he managed, he was my first manager um, as an influencer. And so he's always had that like business savviness in mind. And I've always kind of looked up to that from him and so with Domini Cosmetics he is like everything that I've ever wanted in a business partner you know Mm -hmm. he um, always has my you know our best interest in mind when it comes to the business and our partners so I've learned a lot from him Mm. what was the question no (laughs) no no, that's totally good no because I feel like like what I was asking, like, what do you have to look like? What do you want to learn? And I like be because you're so compassionate and like, Caesar, yeah, that yeah, more... yeah, he is that assertive one, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I love that about um, Caesar, because I remember I would like you were my you were my neighbor, like in the building. And then yeah. you became like a neighbor, like five minutes away. And so I would yeah. still go over and we would just talk about we would always talk about business because I feel All like no, like no one. I think from our own families would not know how to navigate this type of thing. But I think when it comes to uh, really being successful, just understanding when to clock in, when to clock out, who to hire, who to fire, who to how how to just make shit pop off. (laughs) Right. Yeah. He's definitely been my teacher in all this. I've learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. And I think he's learned a lot from me when it comes to the more emotional aspect and so it just makes a really good balance in our relationships, business and personal. So it's good. The the one thing that makes me laugh the most when I think about when I think about me and Peter giggle all the time about you and Caesar because we're like we blink. It's that it's like that meme bus plane another bus plane another bus because me and peter are like they they do what now they are in disney and then i call you and you're like oh we, we cut that trip short we're in puerto vallarta and then it's like we're not there we're in la we oh we're gonna we're gonna go to mykonos we're gonna go i'm like oh my <laughs> god you guys like have this like 
spontaneous travel. like yes. travel and yes i think i think because me you know we would be on these brand trips i think me and peter have a ptsd of like go content go. but you actually yeah. you guys you, you guys go for leisure pleasure mm-hmm. like recharging and i feel like i'm understanding now it's okay for us to travel and mm-hmm. to enjoy because peter yeah. and I, you remember we were doing going on so many trips back in the day oh, that yeah. It was like content, All glam, time. make sure my lashes stay on. We're going to skydive on this bitch. Like, it's so crazy. Exactly. <laughs> and how crazy that sounds is exactly what it was. And I guess I just I adjusted to it because <laughs> that's what we do in our normal life. Like, honestly, mm. we're always on the go. And Did, did it, you go skydiving too? I did. I went skydiving. You did. Mm-hmm. I think I remember it was you and me. We were like, are you going to go? And then like, I was are so you? scared. Me too, bitch. We were all scared. It was just, it was just so funny. It was um, so wild. And I don't think I'll do it again because me I, either. I was in mid air. Like as soon as we felt, we dropped from the plane, I screamed and I could hear my scream, but then all of a sudden I could, nothing could come out of my, my yes, mouth. I remember you, yes. I remember and you because like, there was tears. so much air. Like just going down. for like a second, I couldn't breathe. It was just tears. I don't know if I was in shock, but then it came back, and I was like, "Ah!" It was like, yeah. "Okay." This, it was beautiful because it was Hawaii. Like the view. Was yes, so that was beautiful. with Tart. Right. Yeah. With, oh my god. But so I don't amazing. think I, it's on. I checked it off my bucket list. I'm good. Can you talk about um Dominique Cosmetics and and what what the brand is, who the brand is, because it's your mm-hmm. last it's your last name. It's my middle name. Actually, your middle name. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, my last name is Caesar's last name, yes. which is not close yeah, yeah. to that. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, so my middle name is Dominique. My grandmother named me Dominique. Mm-hmm. Um, she um, was a big part of my life too. Um, mm-hmm. But Dominique Cosmetics was started because I was ready for the next journey and chapter in my life when it, in the beauty space. And I had, you know, thankfully we have, you know, YouTube earnings and sponsorships and I was like I'm ready to take this into the next phase of my life and have something that's long lasting that's tangible to my followers and a little piece of me a little piece of my passion that I can keep going or growing um I think that at the time um and still is like I love creating content I'm a content creator but I was ready to create something else that was you know I was really proud of and yeah so I created Dominique Cosmetics. I think I've always wanted to create this brand since I was a young makeup artist. So I started um, a really young makeup artist. (laughs) I started in, I I didn't get paid for it, but let's just, let me just tell you this little Mm -hmm. bit. So um, I initially, my makeup journey started from my under eye circles. Um, Before that, obviously I was following my mom's makeup routine and like putting on my dolls but it didn't really start until middle school. I was getting negative comments all the time about my under eye circles all the time. I was getting kind of bullied about it and I had had enough. I was like, my confidence was very low at the time and um, I had enough with myself feeling like this. So I was like, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. I grabbed my mom's yellow, it was bright yellow concealer and I put it on under my eyes. I didn't tell anybody, I didn't tell my mom or anything. I walked out of the house and I swear when I walked into school, everyone treated me different in my head. I was, I was like, I felt so like people were more engaged with me. Like they, they would talk to me more. I would talk to them. And I honestly just felt the transformative power of makeup at that time. And I don't think it was so much about other, the way other people were treating me. It's the way I felt about myself. Like I felt more outspoken, more confident. And that's when it started and it sparked my interest in like this beauty industry and beauty journey. And from there, that's when I started being the locker room makeup artist. They were like, oh my God, you look so different. There's a huge difference. Like, can you do my makeup? Can, can you use my makeup? So I was doing everyone's makeup in middle school in the locker room like I was an artist. <laughs> so that transferred to high school. And then outside of high school, I was like, okay, let me just start charging a little bit. So I would do freelance. But ever since I was a young freelance artist, I knew that I wanted my own product because I would customize everything I used. And when I used a palette, I was like, you know, I didn't have a lot of money back then. So I used like all my money on these like 
maybe like one expensive palette and I couldn't multi-purpose the eyeshadows and I wanted to. So I knew I wanted to create something that was a multi-purpose pan size that mm. simplified my routine whenever I did makeup. So that was my thought process always with my brand. And that's how I've created my multi-purpose purpose palettes now that I have um, to simplify any beauty routine. So um, that has always been the core of the brand. Mm. And also, um, because of my story starting from a place of insecurity, I always wanted that motivational messaging and confident messaging about confidence in the products. Mm -hmm. So, um, and even when I create content on my YouTube channel, ever since I started, I always have a motivational message at the end of the video. Whoever's watching can take that little piece with them and have it just linger in their head. It's a, almost like affirmations, like a mm -hmm. positive affirmation, because beauty is more, you know, than what's on the surface. Right. It's really about what's inside. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Dominique Cosmetics was created. Mm, I love that. When it comes to getting to a place of like having um an amazing brand like dominique cosmetics like getting that support like from caesar or other people in middle school what how did you explain to people like this job because i know for me my parents were like what the hell are you doing like looking like a drag queen <laughs> like, in there did caesar did caesar and eventually Jaden get like what you did and your mom and your family? I think my family were a little more like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to move out to LA to do this. Like, you're going to make money from it. <laughs> they were confused. But Caesar, for some reason, he's always had a really good eye for this stuff. And he was like, I was trying to hide that I was doing YouTube videos. I was so embarrassed. And then finally, whenever I actually... Um, I don't want to go off on a different story, but um, the reason why I started creating these videos like consistently was because at a portion of my life in my mid twenties, I'd say I was going to school full time, working full time. Um, I'm a full time mom and I was freelancing, you know, doing my passion, but I had to stop one so that I could be a better mom and further my education is how I was thinking back then. Um, not so much my passion and what I loved. So I let it go and every, I, I feel like my clients knew that, you know, I was letting go something that was really special to me. And they were like, why don't you continue to do YouTube and you can practice that way and you'll be at home and, you know, be that, that way you're not letting it go. So that's how I started doing it mm -hmm. consistently um, in 20, I think 2012 is when I started doing YouTube videos consistently. So when I, when they noticed I started, I was doing videos, Caesar was like, why don't we get you like a good camera. So maybe that'll help. <laughs> so he went to go take me and get me a camera. And then um, he's just always been really supportive. And he's like, yeah, maybe, you know, this could be something bigger. And then, you know, Ipsy approached me um, on Facebook, kind of awkward, but um, they approached me on Facebook and they were like, would you be interested in being a beauty, um, like a beauty uh, guru, not beauty guru, they, the stylist for us, like you would make yes. And every month, every month with our bag and you can create your own content in like a high quality setting. And I thought it was crazy. I, I was like, oh my God, no. Um, I was like, I'm going to school. I'm doing this. I'm just going to try to do the normal life. But I, Caesar caught it. And he was like, actually, I saw that message. He's like, you should give it a chance. So just through what they have to say. So we took a call and that call changed my life because they said, you know, they gave me a price that I would be out there for. And it was enough to take a chance. It wasn't a lot. It really was not a lot, but it was enough to take a chance and try it out. So I said, no, Caesar said, yes, let's do it. He's oh always, so he's like, we had just, the thing is we had just bought a house and we would have to put the house up for rent and we did it. And we, we, we just went out there and took the risk. And I'm so glad that I have him as my support system because he's taught me to open, take, be a risk taker and go for what I truly love and believe in. Yeah. It's, it's crazy just listening to your story because a lot of influencer success happens from taking risks, being bold, doing crazy. If we're jumping out of a plane with Tarte Cosmetics yeah. <laughs> or launching your own beauty brand with your own freaking money mm -hmm. or working with investors like me, it's just yeah. all a freaking risk. It and is. I remember too, when I was doing that little um, Nick's Face Awards um, thing, yeah. 
dollars. They was like, you're going to get $10,000 if you make it into the top six. I was like, baby, I have one more round till I get into the top six and I'm going to make this money. I made it to the top six. I didn't win the $25,000 and I thought $10,000 was enough to make it in L.A. Meanwhile, it was only a few months worth of rent and I had to figure out how to do that. But a part of that was taking one thing like that check and multiplying it into other opportunities and eventually having a brand. But I mean, it, yeah. it sounds much easier than that. But risk, I think, is a big, a big thing. And yeah. I'm sure I, I feel like with you and me, we like there's so many emotions at each step of our journey, because I feel like you and me were like, OK, we're excited. We're scared. We're like, what's the fucking worst thing that's going to happen? And then we're like, yeah, exactly. OK, we did it. Oh, my God. I remember when you did your first shoot. It was at the um, it was it was at Ipsy. I came to, su- yeah. to yeah, surprise yeah. you at your it's shoot. Good. You were doing the swatches on the floor yeah. with the poster board. Mm-hmm. Um I think uh, Demir was shooting it, I think, back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, it was just cool. Just I was just like in awe. I was like, I'm going to surprise my friend. She's launching her brand. Like no one sees it, but she invited me. I remember <laughs> meeting your hairstylist. Yeah. And you were shooting it. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. It's this crazy, is crazy. How much we evolved from and, and how much we've actually been through all together like you've seen Mm -hmm. the growth actually of me myself my son like you've seen it all Mm -hmm. it's so you were in my first music video too in the got the glam i was like i want all these people that mean a lot to me in the video i was like krista can you be in the video and you were like one of the students and it was just so cool to have you in that and to see a little bit of me and it's just crazy um let's talk about friendships i mean because we keep talking about friendships like do you do you feel like it's it's even today for to start out today it's important to be mem- friends of people in the community because oh, for sure. there's not really like a playbook no there isn't you kind of have to figure it out on your own but um i definitely think friendships are very important just for you to especially in what we're doing like it's very an interesting and rare even though we're surrounded by it me and you Patrick but it's rare to be an influence like it's influencer as a business you know and so I think it's cool to have people around you that are like you know doing the same things that you are and you can relate to and having that like friend to to just talk it out with like me and you like Mm -hmm. deals brands like situations content creation like all of that it's so nice Mm -hmm. to have someone to talk about that with yeah, it's so crazy because, like, at the end of the day, when we think that there's, like, managers or, like, lawyers, they don't do what the fuck we do, bitch. Like, they're exactly. not putting on the makeup. They're not editing it. They're not voicing it over. They're not typing the caption and hitting upload. It's like, there's something about knowing someone else that does the exactly same, do. that has the same process that you do in terms mm-hmm. of, like, workload because... I mean, everyone can manage like the legal and and all the business side of things, but I think for to empathize, especially your capacity and your bandwidth too, because sometimes it feels like a lot. Did you ever have a time where you felt like you were about to burn out or like be crazy? Because I oh, feel like sure. as YouTubers coming from the 2014 to 2017 era, bitch, we was just like on that bicycle, just pedaling for our lives. Yeah, I mean, we like posting two videos a week now and then doing Instagram content and now events, bitch. Remember those events and trips and the con. It's just like all you're always going, Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, you get burnt out. I for Mm -hmm. sure had my moments and at times still do where I'm like, you know what, I gotta take a second to breathe Mm -hmm. and just live life for a second so that I can be the best that I can be with what I'm doing. Um, I definitely have had to take my breaks. Mm-hmm. It was crazy because, girl, one sickening memory that I have with you, bitch, was going to Kim Kardashian's house. With oh you. my god! You remember? That was. I everything. was like, I was like, what are you wearing? And you I'm were like, in. Wanna... You were in the show, Patrick. Oh, bitch! I was I, right I, next I, to you, and yeah. the, the video didn't catch me, but my hair, maybe. So, but I was like, Patrick's was in the show. So crazy! But I remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was calling you like, 
it, it would be kind of a thing, but I think we were at a, in, a, in a, ta- a, a time and place where we would be like invited to get like mostly invited to beauty stuff together. So I was like, mm-hmm. are you going to, are you? And then we were like, <laughs> do you want to go together? And it's then like we're like, we wear. Yes, <laughs> like, I'm going to wear black. You're going to wear black. We took yes. a picture like in the hall yes. like, right out here on the white. Oh my God. It was just so funny. Like, and then going there and then remember we had to run to the car to go to Jacqueline's party right after. That was right after. Yeah, and then Karen and Sydney hopped in the car with us, yeah. I think. Yeah. And it that was just insane. And to meet like the Kardashians in person and Chris and you've mm-hmm. worked so closely with them now. Like you're mm-hmm. you're another level with them. Oh but gosh, yeah, it's... it was like going back to that excitement, that very initial excitement and that was so cool. And then my ass went home and I filmed that fucking video, girl, in the same turban, the same thing. I did the you she would. launched those you're little sticks. A, you're such I don't a know hunter. how I don't know how I did it, but it's just crazy. Um and, and recently, I think in June, I literally hit my limit and I burned out. It was yeah. just like I went to the hospital, it was crazy, like I couldn't I couldn't manage. Do you do you um do you share with Jaden or Caesar, like in your family, like, listen, mommy's tired or like one second or like, hey, Caesar, I need like a day. Like, what is that like for you? And how do you communicate that to, when your, I feel to like, your team? You know what? I don't think I've ever done that. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think I just, I, I've never told them like, I need a moment. I think mm-hmm. I, I internalize, I probably should. I internalize mm-hmm. a lot of it. And I'm just like, I'm going to just take a break, not tell anybody, but this is what's happening inside. I just, I don't know why I think because um, I don't want them to feel pressured or like, oh my God, what's going on? Because I am like the creator of everything that we're doing. And so I've always just kind of internalized it, but thank you for this therapy session because (laughs) now I know what I need to work on, but yeah, I, I I definitely, that's something I need to work on, but But I know that I do take my breaks. Right. But you, do you know what I feel is um, is really it, it's not noticeable, but I think being in your personal life, I think what people could maybe apply in their space and workspace is that you having ever since came from uh, Texas all the way to L.A. have always had a place like to work and edit separately. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I've noticed that in your life. Um, career you always have like a separate space like Mm -hmm. you had your your smaller office that your first office yeah now you have your big office and I Mm -hmm. I think for you that's kind of like a way to step to switch your mind on and off when to do that and I feel like Kristen has always had a separate space Space. and I know I know not everyone has that opportunity in their life starting out but Mm -hmm. even just to have like a section is it a desk is it a chair is it in front of a window like just to like for me I think when I started YouTube I was like never work in the bed like I made it a thing like I cannot work and edit in my bed I know a lot of YouTubers edit in the bed with their (laughs) laptop or on their couch I have to sit at a desk yeah I have to work on a a desktop it's crazy I gave up the the laptop life I think years ago like i don't have a laptop <laughs> like what? anymore yeah it's crazy i don't think i've ever that's said that I, yeah i i thought you about desktop it all the time all the time that's yeah good. all the time it forces um, you to separate yeah everything. to separate because i feel like that would that was stressing me out like having a laptop emails working on the counter or something i feel like you know i have an i have a little office now so i go there to the okay. desk i'll edit with um my producer des and mm-hmm. we'll just go through the videos or I'll talk with Peter. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, it's just like my phone and my iPad because on top of all the other damn apps that we got to worry about, TikTok <laughs> and all that, it's yeah. just like crazy. But it is. You, but you you like having that separation in that space. I do. I think, and you know that you pointed that out, I've always had made a space separate for content creation and editing apart from my life, even uh, my family life, because even when I lived in that one bedroom apartment, when I first started, I would go into the bedroom and like nothing else would like my family was outside. Like this was the time where I could just focus and then separate that. And now I'm back into mom life, like making dinner, you know, doing things together. Um, So yeah, I've always had a separated where I work and it helps 
balance my my thoughts and my life a little bit more what does Jaden think now is he so used to the camera because it was just so mm-hmm. funny like it's almost like what does Nora think of Kim Kardashian? But what does Jaden think of like <laughs> mom being a YouTuber? Like think, it's just so normal. He yeah, just grew up, he grew into he grew it. Grew up with it, yeah. Because I mean, I, he was one. I think one or two when I was like posting randomly. I have videos that are hidden that he's in, like babbling in the background. So he was really young. Mm. Um, it's like I think he thinks it's kind of cool, and I think some of his like some people from his school know who I am, and I think he just thinks it's a really cool thing. Mm. Um he's inspired for sure and Mm -hmm. yeah and he wants to get into it he does he does he (laughs) he's has a his personality is very much like mine Mm -hmm. whereas like um we're a little bit more like low-key but we really are able to show ourselves like when it comes to like one-on-one with the camera and he wants to do that he wants to be able to do like use his voice in that way and i think it's cool it's so funny just seeing him so small and then growing up into it and then i remember when we were around uh together a lot he was always on his ipad and i was like (laughs) let me ask this little this little man like what's it like (laughs) what are the kids like so I could like adjust and I was always adjust to the times yeah, yeah. I'm like hey well, what game are you playing um are you on twitch like what yes. are you doing um and that was my kind of way like anytime I get the chance to talk to someone that's 10 or 15 or younger I kind of ask like what are the kids watching nowadays because then that's my future you know it really is it's cool that he's just right there so I can ask him like, so what is everybody watching? What's trending? He knows. Really? So he yeah. knows about Lil Nas and the yes. Doja Cat yes. and the Renegade and mm-hmm. the Retrogrades and all that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, the Retrogrades. That's so crazy. Uh, do, do, so he, do you, he, does he share with you like trends? Yeah, he, and, does. he does. He yeah. does. On social. He'll, if he notices something on YouTube or he's really good with analytics, it's so weird. He's like, oh, I noticed that you, you did this today or this video did this much or your sto- or your short went to here. Maybe you should try this. He's good like with the back end. So I'm like, you want to be my manager? <laughs> That's a little Caesar back there. <laughs> right? That's Caesar That's in the so making. That's so funny. That's so funny. Being on YouTube as long as, or on social media as long as me, what is your opinion on this, new, the dawn of the new digital being TikTok? Short, like, what yeah. do you think? And, sh- and shorts Short on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I think that it's, for one, I think it's cool because you it's short it's like quick gratification like you get what you want to learn laugh or cry about like instantly which is Mm. cool but I I mean but I do miss like putting in the time and time to watch a full video on YouTube and I I really like them as well just like sitting there getting to know the person why they're doing the makeup about their family life because on TikTok and Reels you really don't get that unless you're making a quick little reel about your life a three minute versus yeah. like <laughs> oh, our no, old videos grow be like 20 to 25 yeah. minutes you know yeah yeah but it's I think it's cool I mean it's always evolving now they want I feel like now they want to be entertained they want to have knowledge in the shock same value shock and interest and inspired all in one video in six or however many seconds, 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. So it's so different now. But mm-hmm. whereas I mean, like on I YouTube, like I'm going to do an intro, yeah. then I'm going to take a shower. <laughs> like <laughs> your, your uh, morning routines, girl, were always viral. <laughs> like, hi, good morning, guys. Pulling the, the duvet covers <laughs> over, jumping in the slippers. That is like oh iconic. God, that is iconic, Kristen Dominique. <laughs> then I'm going to make a latte. <laughs> then I'm going to go bring it to my desk. Yeah. Then I'm going to edit. Then I'm going to make breakfast. It was like, so that, but do that in, in 30 seconds. In seconds. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's different. I feel like for me, like, I think being an influencer, uh, this is going to sound like a stretch. It's almost like an athlete, like where my body was used to doing social media a certain way, where I would sit in front of the lights, turn the lights on, get in front of the mic, make sure the sound is on the memory card and do all this work and then show up and do a beautiful look and then pose for B-roll and then all that. And then I did a TikTok with... um you know, a few TikTokers and they're doing numbers right now. And I'm like, that's all we have to do. Like, is there, is there nothing more? And I'm like, cause, cause I feel like I'm missing a, a piece right. of it. I'm like, that, that was it. 
Is, That's exactly it, how I feel, Patrick. I'm like, how did I get this many views with like way less time, way less effort? Girl, I I could <laughs> sneeze and it the TikTok will be done. Like there's so yeah. much like, the trend, the sound, the this and that. But I feel like it's something that I have to like adapt to and just be so spontaneous and less produced because I, right. I think I got addicted to like the production yep. value and the lights camera action of it all and what it once became because it's like a it's like a stage production like a theater and I love that you love theater that, like that theater and that that value and and the spotlight and stuff and that's I feel like I get my gratification through one size but on YouTube I felt like it was becoming the audience kept becoming too numb Right to like bored of mm -hmm. that pretty classic. People just want to see you busted, you know. <laughs> like they do. Crazy. They just want real life nowadays, and they have to want to care about your real life mm -hmm. <laughs> and want to see it. <laughs> yes, uh, guys, comment on our on my picture with Chris and Dominique on our Instagram. Say yes to the guests and tell me if you guys think that you guys want production or you guys want raw busted boogers out titties out brawless <laughs> content and and we'll i would see. love we'll i see. can't wait to see what they write going back to um your brand and your business mm -hmm. do, does do you feel like the same type of content thrives for uh do you parallel that content to um being raw or do you still stick more produced and more commercial when it comes to like your brand content you know, I think that's something that's changing. Um, I think when I first started, it was very much production, lighting, Instagram. studio lighting. <laughs> yes. Now we're in, I'm rebranding. I don't know if you were aware of that, but our brand colors are changing. Our logo has changed and we're rebranding. And next mm -hmm. year, I'm so excited for that to come out. Um, but it's going to be more natural lighting. And it, if you notice now on our Instagram, it's more, it's not as highly produced. It's more real. And it's mm. like, it's not like everything is perfect in studio lighting and everything's like one tone. Um, mm. So it's, it's multidimensional and just real. And I think that's mm. what people want to see nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's a reflection of who you are as a person and, and finding that aesthetic for your brand too. Right. It's it's not going to come overnight because I remember when you introduced your new office and you were like, "Look at the new um you know tagline and the new office," and I was like, "Oh my god, it's coming together!" Like the inspirational quotes and the color waves are changing and mm -hmm. your huge pans, girl. <laughs> like the it's just it's just cool to see your brand um, evolve and and in terms of developing like your own unique. DNA and aesthetic where do you find your inspiration I think that I use my I, my personal past history of why I got into beauty as my inspiration that's why I use motivational quotes and like being an artist and trial and error with that having bigger pan sizes that kind of all inspired my brand I think when I first started I wasn't thinking of color theme honestly I was like the product the process like I want it to be you know formulation but I wasn't thinking like, uh, this, how do these colors represent who I am in the story that I'm telling? It was more like, oh, this is like chic and black and rose gold is, you know, elevated. And so now it's more mauve and um, like a light gray and soft black, something that's more that has more light and, and love in it that mm -hmm. really represents who we are and where I come from. So yeah, it's definitely evolved. And um, I think it's okay to, to uh, trial and error and change up your ways until you find what's right. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because when you talk about your brand and trial and error, when it comes to like the DNA of your of your actual beauty brand, girl, you and me and every other influencer was going through trial and error with our own looks, girl. We <laughs> had blonde hair, short hair, big turban, small turban, like <laughs> big heels, little heels, YSLs, you know, like Fashion mm -hmm. Nova. You know, so Nova. Like, we had, I feel like just like, like anyone that's listening on their personal style journey, like mm -hmm. your brand journey will be the same too. And don't feel like, I mean, obviously we want everything to be as perfect as can be, mm -hmm. but once you start to see it walk and talk and, and how people react to it that um hopefully helps 
your aesthetic, right? Right. Like your customers and what they're reacting to and the packaging. For sure. Like the that. And the formulas. It's, yeah, because you, you, you can just see, like, your demographic, too. Did you did you look to um, your Instagram and your YouTube? Like, what are good tools for people to understand who their demographic would be, big or small? I think for sure I looked to, to my – my initial thought was to look to YouTube and Instagram. What's that demographic mm-hmm. look like? And these are the people that I'm going to be speaking to, and, and those are going to be my consumers. So mm-hmm. um, I looked – I think that's the best way. And then over time, I realized, you know, now Dominique Cosmetics has its, it's slightly different actually, which is awesome because they know the brand versus those, there are people that follow the brand and love the products and don't know who I am. And I'm mm. completely fine with that because that is my goal. It, I want the brand Same. alone, you know, um, and they have their own demographic. So it, it's nice. You still got to mm-hmm. start somewhere. And mm-hmm. that's for sure. I started on my, you know, personal YouTube and Instagram. Mm-hmm. I love I love um like one thing recently well this was kind of like an, an ideology that I was saying to my team to like move forward um you know like with what you're saying is like you want your brand to stand alone um I would say less me more we right because two things I can have some motherfucking time for myself to chill <laughs> and number two other the more consumers that may not know who i specifically am can resonate it because they're seeing more representation in the brand so i was like i need a break and number two it the whole gondola or the whole display and the website cannot be just my face because there's more there's more to who we represent in terms of being a brand and and that's what i wanted to capture so i feel like uh, that's what um other you know in the 2015 16 17 that like collabs like it was all about the influencer it was Mm -hmm. all about them it was their channel their youtube but i think when people when you like i think that works for like a collaboration Mm -hmm. but i feel like for a brand like you want multiple people multiple uh, types of people to resonate with that certain exactly certain brand um Mm -hmm. and i got a lot of it through the lgbtq community which was so surprising because i would have drag queens be like go off sis your powder foundation or these lashes yes it's like so crazy so (laughs) cool it's just like oh okay work you know their little liner in their bag or or something do do you get shocked when people have your stuff in their bag and they're like oh my god look so cool yeah to see that they actually whether it's like you know um a follower of mine or like a fellow friend influencer i'm just like you you just have my lip gloss like no big deal like no big deal just hanging in there it's so cool to Mm -hmm. see that like people actually like and use your products and mm-hmm. I love your powder, Patrick. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's amazing. It's taken over thank all my you. other powders. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love your glosses. Thank I, you. I, I love, I was obsessed with the, with the 3D um, uh, logo on your, your blushes mm-hmm. and how loose I, or like that clear, yeah, the clear packaging color. was. And then the empowering, the women empowerment um, with, with the graphic and, mm-hmm. um, design on that was so cool it's just like it's so spontaneous too and i Mm -hmm. i love it it's so cool congratulations thank you it's so crazy we have um a segment called doing the most are you ready to play oh let's play doing the most bitch all right who do you think is doing the most Myself. <laughs> myself. <laughs> you can say yourself. <laughs> Literally. People have said themselves, yes. <laughs> yes. What, what 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 do you have going on now? We have a new launch coming out. Mm-hmm. And I think that with everything that we're launching this year, it's already done. Like I'm already in 2023 i feel like i am do literally doing the most in my aspect in my head wow and then creating like the content that i'm creating it's it's a lot but yeah i would definitely dominate myself as doing the most love it (laughs) what what means the most to you family 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 and love support (laughs) you're gonna kill me (laughs) What? what when were you the most messy when was I the most messy? I think we all had our moments, right? <laughs> um, I feel like, I think when I was in the most mess, I guess I could say that Yes. was probably in around 2017. Mm. I think it was 2017. Um, 
And I think that's when everybody was just like blowing up, heads are blowing up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're all like, oh my God. It was just insane? crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 2017 was definitely so crazy for us. Um, what's the most expensive thing you have? The most expensive thing? Um, ooh. Let's see. I would have to say my cars. They have two Porsches. One is black and that's Caesar has like the gas car. I have the white Taycan. Um, mm. I would have to say those together would be my b- biggest purchases. I love it. I can't wait for, y- for y'all to pick me up. <laughs> we if it's it. one thing that is <laughs> Caesar or Kristen, I always ride with you guys. You do. <laughs> if it's not a Tesla, it's a Porsche. If it's not a Porsche, it's, it's something luxurious. Yeah. And I can only hope I can fit in the back. <laughs> I love it. We'll pick you up. I Let's go it. to Javier's. I love it. Let's go. Let's go. Well, thank you so much, Kristen Zamonique. I'm so proud of you. I'm so honored to know you and grow with you in this industry of beauty. And thank you so much for chatting with me today. Yes. I'll say yes to the guest. Thank you for having me. Of course, be sure to follow Kristen Dominique on social media. Follow Dominique Cosmetics. Subscribe, TikTok. Check her out. Check the family out and support a boss ass bitch and my friend. Love you. Love you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Say Yes to the Guest. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow at Say Yes to the Guest on all social platforms. Remember, you are successful. Now go out and be the bad bitch you truly are. Can't wait to chat with you next time. Bye.